Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. A problem I want to provide for you to try and it um, kind of ties on with my previous videos on parallel lines and proportional parts. Okay, so the idea is you take a piece of paper and you give it a try, hit pause and give it a shot and then I'll walk you through it. Let's take a look. Alright, we're going to be looking at problems 3 and 4 only. And it says in triangle PQR, notice that's the very large triangle here, PQR, find the value of X and Y so that JG is parallel to RQ. Now in order for that to happen, as you've studied in your class I hope by now, when these lines are parallel we have proportional segments. Okay, We can write some proportions from that segment compared to that segment compared to that segment compared to that segment in between those parallel lines. So knowing what you know about those proportional parts you should be able to write some proportions and um, prove, uh, not prove that they're parallel, we know those lines are parallel but now using this information we're going to solve for X and Y. Pause the video and good luck. All right, the first thing that I highly recommend is to label all those parts. So we're going to take all this information here and put it on our diagram. Now, because those lines are parallel, that does give us some congruent angles in there, and it just so happens that this small triangle here is similar to the large triangle, P, R, Q. Now, because of that, we have some corresponding and proportional parts. So let me take four and compare it to the entire thing. So the four side of the small triangle corresponds to the four plus x side of the large triangle. All right, let's see what that looks like. Four compared to four plus x. Okay, that's small triangle part to large triangle part is the same as, now notice this y here, I can't have an x and a y in the same proportion. Okay, I need to have a single variable. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this bottom side of the small triangle, which is 5, and the bottom side of the large triangle that corresponds there, and that's x plus 6. Alright, now when we cross multiply, that gives me 4 parentheses x plus 6, because that's multiplication right there equals 5 parentheses 4 plus x. I hope you're following me so far. Use the discretive property to on both sides to uh, get rid of those parentheses and that will give me 4x plus 24 equals 20 plus 5x. Alright, let's get all the variables on one side and get rid of the free number. At this point, I'm kind of compressing two steps into one row, but basically, I'm going to get rid of the 4x on the left by subtracting 4x on the left and the right. Now all my x's are going to be on the right-hand side. And I'm going to subtract 20 from the right side and also the left side. That way, my constant term is on the left. Okay, So I'm going to kind of isolate the x and the constant term. And so it follows that x must be 4. Okay? x is 4. So I'm going to cross out this right here and put in a 4. We've got that done. And if x is 4, that whole thing there must be 10. And so now I have 5 compared to 10. Oh, that's a scale factor of 2, isn't it? And 4 compared to 8. All right, that must tell me that this 6 must also match this 6 because 12 for the side of the large triangle has to correspond to 6 on the small triangle. So number 3, x is 4 and y is 6. 
All right, move on to number four. Now, the X and Y values are different. Okay, we're going to plug in a totally set of, new set of numbers. So here we go. Our Q is 10. Filling in the rest of the numbers looks like this. Now, I notice that in the small triangle, I have an 8X minus 5 side here, a 3Y plus 2 side here, and 8 is looks like the longest side there on the small triangle. Now, on the large triangle, we get 10. And we have x's over on this side and y's over on this side. Notice that we can pair up the 8 with the 10. Those are corresponding parts. So that's a good place to start. I'm going to go ahead and write the ratio of 8 compared to 10. So that's small triangle side compared to large triangle side. And then let's solve for x's first. This is 8x minus 5. And that is going to correspond with the total of these, right? Because that's the large triangle side. So if I have 8x minus 5, add another x, that'll be 9x minus 5. I hope that you followed that. Okay? Remember that we have to compare the entire side there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and multiply using the distributor property to get 72x minus 40 equals 80x minus 50. Okay, let's isolate the x's on the right this time and the constant on the left. So I'm going to subtract 72x from each side and add 50 on each side. So 10 equals 8x. Now we're going to divide each side by 8 to finish this off. And I would get x equals 10 over 8 is 5 fourths or 1.25 okay so not a complete integer answer but 1.25 now let's solve for y again we're going to take these 8 to 10 ratio for that pair of sides and we're going to compare the 3y plus 2 from the small triangle to 4y plus 2 because remember we're going to add both parts together right 4y plus 2 similar to the x problem here let's cross multiply and use distributor property 32y plus 16 equals 30y plus 20 now we're going to isolate the y on one side and the constant on the other by subtracting y on each side and subtracting 16 from each side. 2y equals 4 and then y must be 2. Alright, x is 1.25 and y is 2. Again, this is an exercise in Parallel lines creating similar triangles. Therefore, we have proportional parts, and we can write proportions to solve for missing parts, and that was the idea here. Okay, I hope this helps with what you were studying in class, and if you share this with others that need it, great. Pass it on. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.